morning, everybody. Today I'm at Oscar Shear State Park. There's a, this is one of the big campgrounds. And I was gonna like open and say, despite the fact that it's like 900 degrees today, people were camping out. But most people that are camping have RVs and they are air conditioned RVs. So they don't uh, have to deal with the heat while they're sleeping and stuff just out basically during the day. I wanted to take you guys to a really cool part of the stream where I saw the other day when I was uh, I was hiking, I didn't take any video, that it has a really, a really nice clean section. Most of these rivers I think are relatively clean. Only thing is is that because they're stained so dark with that leaf stuff, it looks like they're dirty. Like it looks black almost. I'll show you I'll show you this stream up here how dark it is. So this is the river and you can see how even in the really shallow sections right here, it's very, very dark brown. Not because it's dirty, but because it's stained with leaves. I still haven't figured out what which leaves, but there's actually some kids down here swimming right by the bridge. You can you can kind of hear them. You can kind of hear them. They're swimming out here. I don't know if if you if you saw the last video I did out here a couple weeks back, where I talked about uh, alligator, the possibility of alligators being anywhere in Florida, any body of water, ponds or lakes or streams. And especially when it's like dark like this, it's especially kind of creepy to think that there's an alligator. And I also mentioned that there was a fatal alligator attack here. I think it was 1972, like a 15 year old girl was actually grabbed by an alligator. And you can actually go online and find um, like all the fatal, somebody, there's a website where you can find all the fatal alligator attacks. I don't know if it's in the United States or something. And there's only like 20 something total. So, I mean, that's pretty good odds. There's been people that have been bitten and survived. Recently, a guy was uh, on the news was, um, he was, <laughs> all right, what am I trying to say? He was looking for golf balls in a pond, like in a golf course, and an alligator bit his arm, but he kept his arm and he was okay. How deep is it right there? What? How deep is it right there? Like three feet. I would say the difference between this and the other state park we have, which is Mayaka Park, is that this one um, is more swim friendly, I guess you could say, <laughs> even though they got, we got the alligator signs out here. I'm almost 100 complete, 100 percent sure that there's no alligators in this pond because I think they have alligator traps and they make sure that there's nobody out here. But this is a really beautiful pond, Mayaka State Park. There's really no nowhere to swim in that whole park because there's a large alligator population. Once again, like I said. But here, slightly less. But where we're going to go is like a little tiny creek. So the chances of alligators being in there are very slim. Florida in general, in this west coast area of Florida, we don't have like these real clear streams and stuff. Like, like I was showing you earlier, a lot of times it's either like really brown or dark or brackish. Or you go, if you cut in, it's very like uh, silty and muddy your feet just sink in there but the creek we're going to right now that I was over at the other day had a uh, a kind of a rocky bottom I guess you could say sandy every once in a while you'll find one that has more like white sand so it's more of a cleaner rather than stomping around in some like gooky muck You see that little thing jumping there? I don't know what kind of bug that is, but you'll see them. It's like they jump, they just fly a little bit, and then they land again. I still haven't figured out what kind of bug that is. Anybody know what those are? I tried to get a good shot of it. Maybe I'll do a little still. While I was bending over, this freaking sand spur was hit me right in the stomach. 
the other thing that kind of stinks about here is sand spurs a lot. Look what I found, Mr. Mr. Gopher tortoise out for a little walk there. For some reason these guys, whenever you see them, they freeze. It must be sort of a natural, natural defense mechanism. Maybe the idea is that they look like a big rock or something. But uh, sometimes you don't see very many of these guys. This would be the, the front part of the park and it goes uh, out east out this way. We're right here toward the back. I would call it the back 40. Try to intercept this creek. I'm trying to figure out like right about maybe somewhere over here. This creek here is a very nice uh, clean creek. So this is the like the entrance to the Legacy Trail, which is the trail in the eastmost area of the park. A lot of, uh, like I said, <clears throat> a lot of shells on the ground. If you take a look here, you can see these shells like right here. I'm not completely sure that this this wasn't poured, but like all over, when you walk all over, you can see these little seashells. This area is uh, a lot of plains until you get back further and a lot of maybe thick trees. Look at those clouds out there, really pretty. These uh, These thunderstorms, I don't know. I'm just a big fan of clouds. They look they look so beautiful. You get the you get the strong textures of the dark undersides of the clouds, but the top sections are like the little puffy white. It looks like a painting to me. It's very beautiful. It adds a real depth to the sky. And then you got these real dark rain clouds over here. So beautiful. It's not as beautiful when they're raining, but still we need that rain because it's been dark. Look at these uh Pretty purple flowers here. Pretty beautiful. They really stand out among all these uh, these other green areas. When you get this little bit of color, mainly the kind of stuff that you'll see in this area is mostly deer, hogs. Unless you're out at night, you don't see many of the. I think there's probably foxes out here. But you, daytime, you'll see some tortoise. I saw a deer maybe a couple hundred yards down here, like during the afternoon, actually, here, which is pretty unusual. There's a deer standing right there. Just barely spotted him. I think he's wondering if I see him. His butt's right there. Dang it. His butt is right there. There's his head, and now he's running off. See him? I don't think the deer are usually out except for the mornings and the night times usually. It would it would be very unusual to be walking two o'clock in the afternoon and see a deer out here. But I believe that there you know there's a there's the possibility we have Florida panthers out here and of course snakes. And as you walk through you can see all this burnt burnt trees because uh they must have had a, a fire I don't know if it was a year back, but everything else is green, but you can still see these remnants of uh, all these burnt trees where the fire was all blackened. But that's actually nature's way of sort of pruning, I think they, they say. They say it's good for it because it sort of clears out all the dead thickets and allows new growth when we had these forest fires, which is a natural part. They, uh, they used to think it was bad but then I think some biologists or something did some studies and found out that it's actually good for nature to have these forest fires and let kind of renew the whole area. So you look at this side, all the bark is pretty black. And then you come around the other side and the bark looks like uh, normal brown tree bark. I don't know if you can see that. It's all brown on this side. When I used to uh, do the camera for the news, I had a chance to come out to some forest fires a couple times. Um, we have a lot down south. We have a lot of areas that are just all wooded areas, and sometimes like a, they'll have a lightning strike or something, and it'll start a fire. 
and it'll burn for you know sometimes if it's if it's real windy there's no rain it will it could burn for two or three days sometimes so it's really curious that and especially uh stuff like uh, a palm tree there's a palm tree over there there's palm trees the flames will go up it'll catch the pot the fronds on fire and they'll crackle really really loudly like almost like fireworks like there's a really loud noise and then after a few minutes they'll just sort of burn down to the nub of the branch and then it won't make any more noise it's really forest fires are really interesting although it really sucks when it's like you know it messes up people's property and things like that This little section of stream here, you can tell because of the water going through how, how swift the current here is. Normally it would not be like that because we've had a lot of rainfall in the last, I guess, week or two since I've been here last where it was a little bit drier. You can see there's a lot of water coming, coming through this creek. Pretty swift current there. Can you see these little dots that are sort of swimming around really fast, those little dots? There they are down there, darting back and forth, those little things. Let's see if I can get a better shot there. Those little darting, darting bugs. I forget what they're called. Water bugs, I guess. I don't know what you call them. A whole bunch of them just kind of skipping around down here. Look at those bad boys right there on my sock. They're like nature's Chinese stars. Look at those pointers on that thing. The trick to these things is you have to lick your fingers and then pull them off because otherwise they stick in your fingers. See, so get your fingers with some spit on them. Pull them, pull them out gently. This one doesn't want to come out. Man, look at the sticker on that bad boy. Look at that thorn. Ah, that one won't come out, boy. When you get those in the wrong spot, you'll know it. Ah, I need some pliers to pull that one out. Speaking of stickers, look at this thing. That has got some serious thorns on it. Just a minute ago, I sat on one of these, and boy, I felt like a bee stung me in the ass. Gotta watch out for those things, too. Look at this little section. There's a big pile deposit of shells for over, over here. I don't know if it's like was left from a big flood, but you can see just a massive amount of shells right here in a big pile. Evidence to the fact that this was all water at one time. Be interesting if there was a shark's tooth in here. Sometimes this is basically how you find them is just sort of sorting through. I've been on different areas in the wooded areas way far away from the shores where you'll just be looking through some shells and there'll be a, like a black thing kind of like this sort of like that. It might be a piece of bone or something that whatever that is. This phone doesn't do close-ups very well but and you'll find a little piece like that it'll be part of a shark's tooth, a fossilized shark's tooth. Sometimes it takes a lot of patience unless you get lucky and there's just one sitting right there but if you look up online you can find out how to find them and where to find them a lot of people make videos on where to find sharks teeth but sometimes it's just a matter of luck i've been uh, to places where you'll just see them right on top of the sand because the rain has washed away a lot of sediment <clears throat> you'll just see them sitting right on the surface the other essential essential tool of trekking around in the woods in Florida is you want a little stick because a lot of times you'll find there's spider webs that are so small you can't see them. So I usually grab a stick and sort of just keep it out in front of me as I'm walking. That way I can catch all those little spider webs because it's a lot more fun than catching them like right in the face where you can't, <laughs> it's right in your mouth and your eyes. Not the funnest experience. 
one thing I've sort of taught myself is when you see a section that has a lot less brush or the brush is sort of like uh, flatter, I guess you could say, the grass is flattened out, is usually where the game trails are or the animal trails are, where the animals come through to eat or drink, not eat. I just heard some thunder there. Like these sections without a lot of the palms is because the animals have been through here to come down and get a drink. You can see the ground has more dirt. I don't know if you can see this. A lot more dirt showing here than leaves, giving you the impression there's been a lot of foot traffic by animals in here. Probably coming down to get a drink during the evening when nobody's around. Here's a nice spider's web here. You can see that. The sun's shining on it there. Looks like there's a dead spider there too. I don't know if you can see. It's like right there. Oh, that is, uh, actually I see a live spider. He wasn't moving. Let's zoom in on him. It's like a live spider. He was playing dead, I guess. This is basically the section I've been looking for. I don't know what that is. Big oyster shell or something, looks like. This section, I imagine, is where a lot of the animals come down to drink because it's a nice flat, flat area as opposed to this real uh, steep bank. I don't see any uh, footprints though. Kind of looking around to see if you can see. A lot of times if it's muddy like this you can see some uh, raccoon tracks or some deer tracks. It's possibly because it rained recently and it might have washed them away. This little section where the where it's real sandy and stuff you can see. I said it'd be in dirt, it's actually like sand, but I was hoping that it would be the water levels would be down a lot more so I could maybe sift through some of the sediment, but it's uh the levels are up a lot higher, so I don't, I don't think I'm gonna be able to go in there. But normally you'd want to look on these little shoals where it's these raised pieces of uh the river where it sticks up and a lot of the shells and uh fossils are exposed. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that today. Water level is just a little too tall. Look at this pretty green lichen. Almost looks like carpeting here. It's this real soft green, almost feels like felt all along this uh, palm tree. It's like a little tree carpeting. Wonderful the little, look at these, where it's a little longer. It does, look, it almost looks like golf course grass or something. Very pretty. This palm tree here. I think the storm is definitely coming this way. I can see the wind blowing toward me. And the wind's picking up. That's usually the, the sign of a rainstorm, so we might have to get, go get going. Right through those trees, you can see those dark clouds coming this way. I don't want to get caught in the rain. See how this palm is all burnt right here? all these black charred marks. These things will burn down to nothing right at the bottom of the tree and then it will completely regenerate. They're very resilient. These, uh, I think they're called cabbage palms. Very hard to kill those things. They're, oh, speaking of spider's webs, just ran into one there. If you look out at the sky out here where it's nice and blue, it starts to get dark out here. You can see that curtain of rain right over here working its way southward. Big curtain of rain right there, headed this way. That's why I'm trying to get back, did a little jogging, I'm trying to work my way back here. There's a good shot of that little banana spider there. Got a big long body and a really pretty yellow and black legs there. Reminds me of something from like Starship Troopers, those big bugs in that movie. This thing's not all that big, it's just because I'm close, it looks a little bit bigger. It's probably about as big as my fingernail. 
but I wouldn't want to have him be, you know, jumping on me. These trails on the Legacy Trail, yeah, they got these benches. These little signs on there, in case you need some help with anything, you can call the ranger station and tell them what bench number it is, and they know right where to come get you. Very cool.